March was a very busy month. Not only were we helping horses in Tennessee, but we were helping rescue, shelter, and protect horses across the United States and around the world. In this report, you'll hear all about it. March was an amazing month. My name is Angela and I am the shelter manager here at Horse Plus Humane Society. In the month of March, we helped 341 animals around the globe. We helped 242 horses, 76 donkeys, eight mules, eight cats, one dog, four goats, and two pigs. Year to date, we have helped 718 animals, 574 horses, 99 donkeys, 14 mules, 12 cats, four dogs, 13 goats, and two pigs. Across the US, we've helped animals in 27 states, 20 in Alabama, 16 in Arizona, 87 in California, 25 in Colorado, six in Florida, 14 in Georgia, two in Illinois, two in Kentucky, two in Maine, two in Minnesota, nine in Mississippi, nine in Missouri, four in New Hampshire, 60 in New Mexico, one in New York, five in North Carolina, one in North Dakota, five in Ohio, two in Oklahoma, 18 in South Carolina, 160 in Tennessee, 89 in Texas, seven in Virginia, three in Washington, two in West Virginia, 11 in Wisconsin, and two in Wyoming. 151 in Indonesia, and three in Spain. Thank you so much for your support. Without supporters like you, we wouldn't have been able to help 341 animals in March and 718 animals so far just this year. And now, Corey, our shelter foreman, will tell you about what's been happening locally. My name is Corey, and I am the shelter foreman here at Horse Plus Humane Society. In March, we had a total of 66 animals that we helped here at the rescue. We had 30 horses, we had 14 donkeys, eight cats, seven mules, one dog, four goats, and two pigs. The origination of those were 30 owner surrenders and we got 36 out of the auction rescue. In total, we sheltered 81 animals altogether here at the rescue in March. So the animals, from 2022 were 38 horses, 12 donkeys, eight mules, three cats, and two pigs. And from 2021, we had nine horses, one mule, three cats, and then we have one resident horse and two resident cows. Next up is our vet tech, Jenna, and she's gonna tell you all about what we did with the animals here at the rescue in March. It was a very busy March here at the rescue for our medical team. We had a lot of horses that needed medical care, and we had a lot of horses that were coming in from auction in really sad condition. Unfortunately, we did have to give the last act of kindness to some of them. We did have one really sweet horse that did pass away, and then 15 we had to give the last act of kindness to. One of the really sad ones was Tootsie. Tootsie came in in our February auction, and she was a really sweet girl. It looked like she did have prior eye damage and was possibly blind as well. Unfortunately, after a few weeks of being at the shelter, she developed what is called melting ulcers. Melting ulcers can be from a bacterial or a fungal infection, but the problem with them is they start really quickly and they grow very rapidly and they're extremely painful and extremely hard to deal with. So that happened in the course of only 24 hours that she started having that. So given the fact that Tootsie had not only the melting ulcers, previous eye damage, she had found her that was starting to become pretty painful and she was underweight and really old. She wasn't gonna have a pain-free life. So we did opt to give her the last act of kindness. Another really sweet girl that we had to give the last act of kindness was from our March auction and that was Iris. Iris was a really sweet donkey that I got to meet at auction. And on first examination, um, it was pretty obvious that she had string halt in her back legs. She looked like she had a pretty bad skin infection. 
Um, so we were still kind of hopeful, see what we could do with her, but unfortunately we did get her back for intake at our shelter and Dr. Duncan took radiographs. She had severe founder. Every time that I look at radiographs that are horrible, I think that's the worst I've ever seen. And then always surprised, a couple days later we get something and their feet are just horrible. So with Iris, she had severe rotation um, and with that you can't fix it. So given all of her issues, she was never gonna be comfortable in life. And it was really sad because she was only five but we did have to give her the last act of kindness. Even though we did have to give the last act of kindness to a lot of them this month, there was so many that were able to be healthy and rehabbed. Um, one of my favorites is from this last auction was Daffodil. When we saw her at the auction, she had a pretty significant leg injury to her right front um, with some proud flesh. And then when we got her back, a lot of that had kind of broken open just because it wasn't properly treated. Um, so she has been getting daily leg wraps with cold hosing, antibiotics, steroids, the whole medication concoction. And we've been doing that every day, including the weekends. So one of the ones that we got to treat that has been a lot of fun has been the little man kicker. Um, when he came in, he's about between like a year and 18 months. Um, we couldn't quite tell if he was intact or not just because he hadn't dropped yet, but he also had an abdominal hernia. But given the fact that he was young and he was really healthy, we were gonna do everything we could to fix him. And so we took him up to Dr. Duncan and she was able to actually castrate him and do his hernia repair um, at the same time. And since he was so young and healthy, he recovered great. He's still recovering great. And I know that very soon here, he'll be looking for his perfect home and he's gonna make somebody a really fun project. So as a lot of you know, Doc has been out um, on medical leave and we have absolutely missed him terribly. We've missed his medical expertise as well as his wit and his humor. Um, but we have had a great team of veterinarians helping us out in Doc's absence. We have taken some of the Tennessee equine, which included Twix that had his castration up there. Tucker went for a respiratory evaluation. Spruce went up there and got his eye catheter removed and Moon Pie got an evaluation. We have hauled horses up to Doc's office where Dr. Duncan has been wonderful in helping us out. And then we've had Dr. Duncan coming out here and helping us too. So even though we miss Doc terribly, we have had a great group of veterinarians helping us and making sure that all of our animals still receive the top-notch care that they deserve. So this month at auction has been interesting. It seems like last month the theme was eye injuries and blind horses. And the theme this time seems to be there's definitely founder, which we always see. Um, it seems like lately we always have a mini or a pony that has a previously injured leg that nobody took care of. And so the joints start to calcify and the bones and everything. And this time, unfortunately, that was little Neo. He was pretty young, um, only about 12, but the poor guy, he had his front left leg was looked like a previous injury and it was starting to calcify. So he couldn't walk on it. He didn't even try to really walk on it. And not only that, he had a puncture wound in his neck that had a draining track all the way down the inside of his neck and was severely infected. That was one that we were really hoping that radiographs were gonna show that we could fix, but unfortunately the damage was already there and too long, and so he did have to get the last act of kindness. We were able to rescue four drafts, um, and they're very sweet. And I know a lot of the times we get drafts at auction that are in really bad condition, but so far I'm hopeful, because it looks like although they are underweight, the biggest problem seems to be their feet. And we have a wonderful team of farriers helping us out, getting their feet on track, so I'm really excited to see where they get to end up in their new homes. We have had a great month treating all these horses and getting them ready for their new homes. So I'm gonna let CJ talk to you about all the ones that did get their new homes this month. My name is CJ, I'm on the adoption team. I am the one that goes over the applications, makes the appointments and everything. And we did 53 adoption placements in March. Um, 18 of those animals had been here since 2021. And then the other 35 came to us in 2022 and then were adopted out in March. One of my favorites, of course, is uh, Twix, which was my uh, adoption, my first adoption here at Horse Plus, and he's doing great at, at my house. He gave us a little scare, um, as you all saw in the episode with his gelding, but he's doing great now. Um, we had it actually adopted out, I think, two dogs this month, and one drove all the way from West Virginia to meet him, so that was really awesome, and she was really excited to take him home. We also adopted out goats, which was a little different, um, but that was really cool and they all got to go to some really good homes. We did do a shelter transfer, which everyone saw um, Mr. Hawaii, which was like everyone's favorite as well, that he got transferred with a few more of the horses here um, as well as a cat. 
We adopted out B and Bradley to a nice couple. They were a lot of fun to have out here and they love mules, so they were very excited to get started uh, giving them some extra training. Peppermint was another one of our shelter transfers. Um, she uh, is pregnant, so that was really great to make sure that she had a home with someone that could really keep an eye on her. Um, Goose was one of our previous big licks, um, and so he went to someone who rescues previous big licks that they are able to just um, retire and live their life out as a pasture pet. Coco got adopted. Um, she had a really sad story where someone wanted her baby and so they got her and the baby, but then they uh, just wanted the baby, so they dumped her at the auction. And then she had actually been um, with us for quite a while um, because she is a little unhandled and definitely needs some more training. But this month she found someone who is going to work with her and he was very excited. And um, uh, he's already given us an update of how she's settling in and we look forward to more. We are very excited to have placed uh, 53 animals just in the month of March and we look forward to April's adoptions as well as getting follow-ups on all these guys and seeing how they're doing since they found their forever homes. Our Grants Department has also been doing amazing this month. Hi, my name is Megan and I'm from the Grant Department. I receive all the grants I get submitted. In the month of March, we gave out 275 grants. 82 of them being for auction rescue, 11 for stallion scouted, 6 for the last act of kindness, and 176 for urgent needs. The amounts of grants given for the month of March globally was $28,980. The auction rescue grant was $14,600. Stallion scouted $1,100. For the last act of kindness, $900. The urgent needs, $11,105. And shelter transfer, $1,275. For the month of March, we helped 25 organizations globally with 268 equines and seven private horse owners with seven equines. One of the auction rescue grants that we'd like to tell you about is from Zuma's Rescue Ranch. They had received a phone call about four miniature horses that were found emaciated and covered in lice. Um, the horses were owned by an 18-year-old in Billings, Missouri. Zuma's Rescue Ranch offered them assistance to front vet calls and transportation from the Montana auction to their rescue ranch where they could provide proper care and rehabilitation with the goal of adoption of these ponies. So I have two urgent need grants that we were wanting to tell you a little bit about. The first one is about um, a nonprofit organization that received an equine named Philip in May of last year. Um, Philip was unable to stand on both legs. When he would walk, his body didn't flow together as it should and um, his half, his back half didn't move with his front half. Um, they had a chiropractor come out and was able to adjust him. With the doctor performing stretches on Philip, he was able to stand straight and was walking normal again. Since May of last year, it started up again um, and he refused to walk. And when he did walk, you could just see how much pain he was in. So they um, put in a grant for the urgent needs, asking for assistance with the vet bills. We want to say thank you to all of our donors and everyone who supports um, what we do here at Horse Plus Humane Society. You are the ones that make this possible and allow us to give these grants. I hope you've enjoyed this monthly report and please consider making a donation to Horse Plus Humane Society. We help horses and other animals in a variety of situations, animals that wouldn't have help without our organization. So please consider making a donation to help us rescue, shelter, and protect horses. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.